Why do you have those bags? Where are you going, Agatha? I've already decided. I'm moving out. What? Now. You're leaving now. Where are you going? What? What has happened? Why are you moving out? <laughs> I don't want to disturb anyone. I think Victor and I need to lead separate lives. <laughs> Victor needs his freedom. <laughs> I'm so upset. <laughs> Not everyone has the same character. Elena, you're timid and shy. Victor's more reserved. Not everyone is sociable and outgoing like me. <laughs> I'm too demanding. <laughs> Now you're being dramatic. I don't fit in here. I'm leaving. I'm going to Betty's. Upset? Does it mean sad? Yes, uh, a combination of sad and angry. Perhaps you didn't like the new furniture Victor bought while you were away. She said she liked the bookcase. Anyway, you're not moving out. Don't be ridiculous. Where will you leave? <laughs> I'm going to stay with Betty for a few weeks. Then I'll decide. Are you two fighting? No. Well, we had an argument last night. You just have to respect other people's decisions more. That's all. You don't have to move out. I think Victor is saying you just have to give him more space. But you don't have to move house to do that. Agatha, it won't be the same without you here. It's just sometimes you're stubborn. And selfish. But you're also very caring. Loyal, generous, funny. Funny like fun. Humorous. I'm demanding and bossy too, right? Listen, you two. I think we all have to calm down. I don't understand all the words you're using, but insulting each other is not going to help. Victor. You have a lot to do, and I am sure you've been a, a little anxious recently. Sorry, Agatha. When I'm studying for exams, I become very nervous. This is an important time for me. See? Agatha, he's apologizing. And I'm sure he's going to be kind and understanding from now on. Hello everyone, welcome to your English lesson with me, your charming, kind and modest Gabrielle. That is an important part of our lesson today. How to describe people's character and personality. That was the problem in our sitcom, wasn't it? Victor and Agatha's personalities are too different. And that makes for a very difficult living situation. So, as well as describing personality, We will also review the future tense using will, going to, and the present continuous and the present simple and study the expression have to in the future. Oh, I'm giving a party next Saturday. It's Dylan's birthday. Are you going to come? Sure, you'll love it. Right, first let's review the future tenses. Do you remember when we use the verb to be plus going to? That's right. We use it to talk about future plans and intentions. Like when Agatha says, I'm going to stay with Betty. We also use it to talk about predictions based on what we can see at that moment. For example, saying, I think it's going to rain when you can see storm clouds. And when do we use will? We use it with offers. I will help you carry your bag. Promises? I won't come home late. Predictions without evidence? You'll love the film. And instant decisions? Mmm, I'll have a ham sandwich. Now, to talk about the future, we also use the present continuous when we want to talk about future arrangements. 
For example, if I say I'm meeting my friends tonight, I am talking about something that I have arranged to do. He's flying to Rome tomorrow. We're playing volleyball in the morning. We can also use the present simple for fixed future arrangements. I start my Spanish course next week. It begins at nine o'clock. Wow, there are a lot of ways to talk about the future. Can you remember them all? Don't worry, you will. That's a promise. If we want to say that someone has to do something in the future, we use the expression will have to. For example, if you want to speak English well, you will have to study hard. If I want to buy a new car, I will have to save lots of money. Will have to stays the same in all persons. So we can also say, if Dylan wants me to cook dinner, he will have to wash the dishes. Okay, for his birthday, I'll do everything. Now, let's look at some ways that we can talk about character and personality. As I said before, I think I am charming, kind, and definitely modest. <laughs> How about you? Are you timid and shy like Elena, or reserved like Victor? Or maybe you are like Agatha, sociable, loyal, and generous, but also stubborn, selfish, and demanding. My Dylan is such a sweet and caring man, but he can also be very moody at times. Lady Coco is loving and affectionate when she wants food, but she can be quite aggressive if I try to give her a bath. It's not easy being a mom. <laughs> Speaking of which, I think it's bath time now for my little kitty cat. Wish me luck. See you next time. Bye. Did you get caught in the rain? Is it still raining? <clears throat> well, I wasn't swimming in the Thames. <coughs> the rain um, started while I was riding back from class. It's uh, still raining now. <coughs> oh, this weather's terrible. Come and um, get warm. There you go. Mm, is uh, Agatha home? No, she was on her way to uh, yoga when I came back from class. I hope you're not coming down with a cold. <laughs> Your hair's still wet. Mm. Here, pass me the towel. I'll dry it for you. Mm, thanks. That feels nice. Last night, when I came back from work, it was also raining. That's London. <laughs> if you move a little closer, I can reach the back of your head better. It's just me. Uh, are you okay? All's well. Uh, it's just the base near the door, that's all. Oh. I have to make a phone call. I'll do it from the other room so I don't disturb you two there studying. You don't have to. Um, mm. We can go upstairs. I, I, uh, I can go to my bedroom. And Elena is, is better off drying her hair in the bathroom. Yes, of course. <laughs> Tell Betty. <laughs> I can't wait. Good morning. May I speak to Betty Summers, please? Betty! You'll never guess! Betty? Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Wrong Betty. <laughs> Could you put me through to Betty Summers, please? She works in the accounts department on the second floor. Extension 566. Yes, I'll hold. Thanks. Betty, you'll never guess what my little brother was Elena. doing when I came home. <laughs> no. No. They were definitely kissing. It wasn't just a quick kiss. They were kissing when I arrived home. <laughs> No, no, 
listen, Mom, I have to go. My lesson is starting. I'll call you back tonight. Bye. Sorry about that. My mom loves talking on the phone. It's sometimes difficult to get her to stop. Well, how about the sitcom today? It was getting pretty steamy on the sofa, wasn't it? Hmm. Anyway, let's look at what we are going to study today. First, we will look at the past continuous. For example, I was walking. You were dancing. Then we will look at some prepositions of place and movement, such as in, on, at, and by. Then finally, we will learn some language used on the telephone. Okay? Let's get started. So, when poor Elena came in, she said that the rain started while she was riding back from class. This is an example of the past continuous. The verb to be in the past, so was or were, plus the verb in ing. I was cycling. You were speaking. She was studying. We use the past continuous to describe an action that was in progress in the past. We often use it with the past simple to describe a long action interrupted by another action. For example, I was walking down the street when I saw John. She was washing the car when it started to rain. We also use it to describe two past actions happening simultaneously. As Agatha said, he was sitting on the sofa kissing Elena, meaning he was sitting on the sofa and he was kissing Elena. I was cutting the vegetables while Dylan was pouring the wine. Do you see? Now, let's look at some prepositions of place and movement. Has anyone seen my bag? Oh, here it is on the table. Oh, I'm so forgetful. I can't remember where I put my keys either. Ah, oh, silly me. Here they are in my bag. I remember I put them into my bag so I wouldn't lose them. Mm. And my glasses? Where are they? Ah, they are in here too. I think I'll take them out of the bag so they don't get broken. Mm. Maybe I'll put them onto my head for safekeeping. That's better. Now, after the lesson, I'm meeting my friend Jade for coffee. I'm meeting her at the flower shop on the high street by the park. I hope I remember. You know what I'm like. Okay, finally, I want us to study some telephone language. Do you remember what Agatha said on the phone? She said, may I speak to Betty Johnson, please? This is how we ask for someone on the phone. Then she said, could you put me through to? This is what we say when we are talking to a secretary or receptionist of a business and want to talk to someone specific. Please hold on. To be on hold means to wait to be connected to someone. You often hear some really dreadful music while on hold. We also have some important phrasal verbs in the English telephone language. To pick up is to answer the phone. And to hang up is to end the call. Okay? So now you know how to have a phone conversation in English. Good work. Well, that's all for today. See you next time, or maybe give me a call. Do you want green tea or black, Agatha? Oh, green, please. It's supposed to be very good for you. You've never had green tea before, Agatha. You said it tastes bitter. Are you starting a new diet? No. I just think I need to be a little healthier. When I was a young girl, I loved watching Mother make afternoon tea. Her grandmother taught her how to make a proper pot of tea. <laughs>
When we were children, Agatha and Betty would help Mum make her special jam drop biscuits. Oh, what are jam drop biscuits? They're biscuits, which you push your thumb into to leave a little hole to put the delicious homemade strawberry jam into. Mm. Dad and I love them. Our cousins always had apple cakes with their tea, but jam drops were our favorite. Although, Aunt Mary has always made marvelous jams. Mmm, mm, this tea is good. Mm. Mom sent it from Manchester. That's where our grandmother's from. She goes often to visit relatives and uh, old school friends. Oh, uh, where are you two from originally? Well, Mom's family is from Manchester, and Dad's from the U.S. We spent our school years living with uh, our dad's family in Arizona until he was transferred here with work. Then we lived in a flat in Flagstaff, mm. and we used to visit our granny, grandmother. Oh. On the farm in the country. Okay, guys, I have something to tell you. I've just been to the doctors and... Oh, is, is everything okay? You have been ill a lot recently. Have you taken those vitamin pills I left on the table? Victor? I'm pregnant! <laughs> How long have you known? Have you told Harold? I've just spoken to him, although he suspected for weeks. His transfer has just come through, and he's coming back to London for good! <laughs> That's fantastic news! <laughs> I wonder who that is. I'll go. Hi there. Big news for our friends in the sitcom today. No wonder Agatha is being so careful with her diet lately. And that's great news about Harold coming back, isn't it? Anyway, on with today's lesson. We're going to study the present perfect. For example, I have lived here for two years. Then we are going to look at questions and expressions with the word like. I like tea. I would like some carrot cake. Mm. Do you remember what Lady Coco is like? Here she is. I'm sure you like her. <laughs> Finally, we will look at how to describe your childhood. I'm curious. Are you ready? Let's get started. So, in the sitcom today, Elena said, You've never had green tea before. This is an example of the present perfect. We make the present perfect with the verb have plus the past participle of the verb. I have seen this film twice. We use the present perfect to talk about experiences in our lives when the time is not really important. I have been to India. I have been to South Africa. I've been to France, for example. We can also use it to describe an action that started in the past and continues up to now. He has lived here since 1999. It means he's still living here. I've been singing since I was a child, and I keep doing it now. Another use of the present perfect is to describe an action that happened in the past that has a result in the present, an influence on it. Have you done your homework? Yes, I have, so you can go out now. Agatha said, I've just spoken to him, and now he knows everything. We use the word just when the action happened very recently. You have just learned how to use the present perfect. Well done. Now, let's look at the word like. We use like in many ways. For example, I like chocolate, and I would like some chocolate ice cream. Mm. We can also say, I look like my mom. He looks like a rugby player, to describe somebody's physical appearance. We can use like to compare things. Your hair is like silk, or your eyes are like stars. We can also say, what is he like?
to ask about someone's appearance and personality. What is Dylan like? He's kind, generous, and very handsome. Compare this to the question, how is he? He's fine, thanks. We ask, how is he, when we are inquiring about someone's health and well-being. How are you? I hope you are fine as well. In our sitcom today, Agatha talks about her past. When we talk about our childhood, we often say, when I was a little girl, or when I was 14. We talk about our past using the simple past tense. Victor says, we spent our school years living with Dad's family. This is another way of describing our childhood. Agatha says, we used to visit our granny. We use used to to talk about things that we did regularly in the past. When Lady Coco was a kitten, she used to play with her tail all day long. <laughs> anyway, that's all we have time for today. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Bye.